So let's talk about Teruaki Sato. I initially wanted to wait until the end of the season to get the full scope of his rookie campaign, and I may still end up doing another video on him in the offseason, but now that the first half is over, I think we've got a decent idea of what Sato brings to the table. Now granted, he's only played 84 professional games, that's just over 300 at-bats, so it's an insignificant sample size, but the trends are anything but insignificant. Take a look at his first half stat line. He's played in all 84 of the Hanshin Tigers games this year, and he typically hits 6 in the order, sometimes even cleanup. And upon first glance, his numbers look pretty good, and they are. An 883 OPS with 20 home runs and a 131 WRC plus at the All-Star break definitely makes him a frontrunner for the Central League Rookie of the Year award alongside Hiroshima Karp closer Roji Karebayashi. But now take a look at his ratios. Wow, 16 walks against 121 strikeouts. That's a walk rate of just 4.8% and a staggering 36.7% K rate, which is just about twice the league average. That puts him on pace for 27 walks and 206 strikeouts at season's end. And that would break Ralph Bryant's single season strikeout record set in 1993. Now that is deeply concerning. To be fair, Bryant did that in just 127 games, whereas Sato projects to play upwards of 140 barring injury or a demotion. But even so, if you compare Bryant's 1993 season to Sato's 2021, there is a lot in common. And hitting like this just isn't very sustainable. Take a look at Sato's OPS by month. Every single month starts with a different digit. 780 in March and April, not bad but not great. 985 in May, that's fantastic, 879 in June, very good, and 614 in July, very bad. Now looking at the splits, he does hit better on the road than at home. An 878 OPS on the road versus 787 at home, and he hits better against righties than lefties. 849 against right-handers versus 784 against southpaws, although that's still very respectable for a left-handed hitter. And he's getting pounded with fastballs, only a 233 batting average against the fastball with 5 homers and 50 strikeouts, but he's much better overall versus secondary pitches, particularly against sliders and cutters. That said, he actually can cover the entire plate pretty well. He's better on low pitches than high pitches, and he's better on outside than inside, but all in all, he does a decent job of actually hitting pitches in the zone, albeit with some swing and miss in his game. So what's his main problem then? Well, it's actually identifying what pitches are in the strike zone. He's only taken 61% of would-be balls. That means he's taking a hack at 4 out of 10 pitches out of the zone. Compare that to another left-handed slugger, Munitaka Murakami, and he only swings at 2 out of 10 pitches out of the zone. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with being a free swinger. Plenty of guys can do damage on pitches out of the zone. But for a guy like Sato, there needs to be a better approach. He's perfectly built to be a three true outcomes slugger, but right now he's only meeting two of those criteria. Now he is a rookie, so he will improve. Even Murakami has seen a 5% improvement in ball recognition since 2019 when he won the Rookie of the Year award. That said, the Tigers selected Sato out of college, so he's already a year older than Murakami, meaning he is a bit behind on his development. But if Sato can improve by even 5 to 10% in the coming years, he'll still strike out a lot just by the nature of his hitting profile, but he'll draw more walks, which will help his overall production. Because right now, with an 0.16 BBK ratio along with a 368 BABIP, it just isn't very sustainable. Throughout the course of a season, there's going to be weeks where you just fall into a slump. And what separates good hitters from great hitters is the ability to fall back on your other skill sets, such as patience at the dish, to sustain a respectable level of production. That's exactly what Hideto Asamura has excelled at. He didn't hit for any power in the first three months of the year, but he was still a highly, highly productive bat thanks to his discipline. We've seen Sato go cold this season, and he just gives you nothing because he has nothing to fall back on. For instance, from June 24th to July 4th, Sato went 5 for 36, with 0 home runs and 19 strikeouts, including an 0 for 5 performance with a platinum sombrero. 
So again, Teruaki Sato has all the talent in the world. He may even be a future major leaguer down the line. And the fact that he's top 5 in the league in home runs and RBIs, while also being a versatile defender between third base and right field, and not to mention some speed with 5 stolen bags, makes him a very valuable player, and the Tigers should have zero regrets with their 2020 first round pick. If anything, the fact that he's doing this well with such a big hole in his game tells you that Sato is poised to have a fantastic career. Still, the numbers don't lie, and right now while Sato is on pace for 36 doubles and 34 jacks, he's also on pace to break the single season strikeout record. So he may break the rookie home run record and the all time strikeout record in the same season. Thankfully, the Tigers do have enough options in their lineup to give Sato some protection and hopefully ride this out for the whole year. At the same time, if he starts to get exposed, the second half may not be pretty. So I don't think the Tigers should even bother with moving Sato up in the lineup, even if he's really hot. I'd like to see him stay in that six hole for most of the year, where he isn't going to have the same pressure to drive in runs in the middle of the order. And hopefully, he'll be able to start to improve on his plate discipline gradually, because if he does, then Teruaki Sato may just become the scariest hitter in Japan. And I'm going to leave you with this graph. Can you tell which one Teru Akisato is? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more MPB content in English.